Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 9 on Division of Signed Numbers. Now it is extremely important before you learn how to divide numbers that are positive and negative that you know how to multiply them first. Because everything that we understand about division, in fact, comes from understanding multiplication. That being said, let's jump in and do some review exercises before we start to learn the rules and understand the rules of dividing numbers that are positive and negative. Let's get into that right away with some review. So exercise number one, let's find each of the following products. Now you might, you might notice something right away about exercise number one. It's, it's almost the same numbers all the way along, okay? So I want you to pause the video right now and figure out what each one of these products are and then we'll, we'll go through them really quickly. All right, so what we learned about products involving signed numbers is that when we multiply two numbers that have the same sign, they're both positive or they're both negative, we're gonna get a positive result. We also learned that when you multiply two numbers where one is positive and one is negative, the result is negative. And that makes these problems very easy. Eight times negative two, positive eight times negative two is going to give us negative 16. On the other hand, negative 8 times negative 2, because they're both negative, will give us a positive 16. And finally, negative 8 times positive 2 will give us negative 16. So hopefully those were easy because quite frankly, at least knowing the rules of multiplying sign numbers together is pretty simple. Now again, before we move on and do some work with division of signed numbers, we want to make sure again that we make the connection between multiplication and division. So let's look at that in the next exercise. All right, all division, all division results can be justified and should be thought of in terms of multiplication. And let's do that in exercise number two. <laughs> all results of division can be justified using multiplication. A little redundant. Justify each of the following division results by stating a multiplication fact. All right, so in other words, we know that 35 divided by 7 is 5. Why do we know that? Well, we know 35 divided by 7 is 5 because, quite frankly, 7 times 5 is 35. All right. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about each one of these and write down some kind of a multiplication sentence or equation, right, that justifies each one of these quotients. Take a moment and go ahead and do so. All right, well letter B should have been easy. 63 divided by 9 is equal to 7 simply because 9 times 7 is equal to 63. Now, if you said, well, I wrote down 7 times 9 is equal to 63, well, that's completely wrong. I'm just going to lay it out there. It's actually not completely wrong. It's completely correct. You know, and it's completely correct because, of course, multiplication is commutative. So it doesn't matter whether we think about this as, well, 63 divided by 9 is 7 because 9 times 7 is 63 or because 7 times 9 is 63. Now, it may make it easier, though, down here, right, when we have these tricky fractions to write it down in a way that makes more sense, but it really shouldn't matter either way. So for instance, nine divided by one half is 18. Well, why is that? We can think about it easily as because one half times 18 is equal to nine, right? And definitely one half times 18 is nine because 18 divided by two is nine. That's what one half times 18 even means. Now, one fifth divided by three is one fifteenth. Well, that might be easiest to be thought of as 3 times 1 15th, which would be obviously 3 15ths, that would reduce down to 1 5th. All right. So keep in mind, any time I want to think about what the result of a division problem is, I should really think, you know, like if I had to think about, oh, gosh, what is 9 divided by 1 half? Well, what would I multiply 1 half by to get 9? Well, I'd have to multiply it by 18. So 9 divided by 1 half must be 18. Of course, these kind of problems are fairly easy to think of because they involve nice positive whole numbers. These are a little bit trickier to think about 
And of course, in the next exercise, we're going to start thinking about what happens when we divide by negatives. So let's get right into that right now. Here we go, exercise number three. Think about the quotient negative 16 divided by 8. Recall this quotient could also be written in fraction form as negative 16 over positive 8. Letter A asks us, why must this quotient be equal to negative 2? Use multiplication to justify. So again, again, my, my contention is that right now we should be able to say that negative 16 divided by 8 is equal to negative 2. We should be able to say that. But why? What, what justifies this? Think about that for a moment. Well, it goes back to what we were just doing. Negative 16 divided by positive 8 must be negative 2 because negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. I mean, it can't be equal to positive 2 because 8 times positive 2 is equal to positive 16, right? Now, we can immediately, immediately kind of extend this into a pattern to say that if we have a negative, remember that fraction bar is division, a negative divided by a positive, a negative divided by a positive must give us a negative. A negative divided by a positive must be equal to negative. So let's look at another case, the next one being a positive divided by a negative. Let's take a look. Exercise number four. Think about the quotient positive 16 divided by negative 8, or as a fraction, 16 over negative 8. Using multiplication, explain why the result must also be equal to negative 2, and then write a generalization. All right, so great. Tell me why 16 divided by negative 8 must be equal to negative 2. Pause the video now and write something down. All right, well, let's kind of like write it all out, right? 16 divided by negative 8 must be equal to negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 8, can't get that negative sign, is positive 16. Right? There's my justification. 16 divided by 8 must, negative 8 must be negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. Now, how do I generalize this? I can generalize it by saying a positive divided by a negative must be equal to a negative. In fraction form, hey, red, um, in fraction form, we could say something like this. A positive over a negative must be equal to a negative. Now, before we move on, just keep in mind, right, in the first exercise, what we saw was a negative divided by a positive was a negative. So a negative divided by a positive was a negative. In this exercise, we saw a positive divided by a negative is also a negative. In our last sort of pattern forming exercise, we're going to look at what we, do, what we get when we have a negative divided by a negative. So let's take a look at that next. Here we go, exercise number five. Think about the quotient negative 16 divided by negative 8, or negative 16 over negative 8 in its fraction form. Answer the following. Letter A. Is this quotient equal to 2 or negative 2? Justify your results using multiplication. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I really want you to think about this. Will negative 16 divided by negative 8 be equal to positive 2? Or will negative 16 divided by 8 equal negative 2? It's equal to one of them and you should be able to figure out which one by using multiplication. Take a moment to figure that out. All right, well, here's the question, right? If I had something like this, negative 16 divided by negative 8, well, does that equal 2? Or does negative 16 divided by negative 8 equal negative 2? Okay, well, let's take a look. If negative 16 divided by negative 8 is equal to positive 2, 
that would imply that 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Is 2 times negative 8 negative 16? And the answer is absolutely. Go back and check exercise 1, right? That's why we did exercise 1 to set us up for 3, 4, and 5. See, if we thought that negative, eight, negative 16 divided by 8 was negative 2, sorry, negative 16 divided by neg negative 8 was negative 2, and that would make a lot of sense. It would, uh, boy, I tell you, if I was just guessing, like, like just right off the bat, this is totally the one I'd guess. But that's definitely not correct because that would mean that negative 2 times negative 8 was negative 16. And that's definitely false. And we saw that in our last lesson. A negative times a negative is a positive. It's not a negative. So this one's definitely wrong. And what that leads us to understand is that anytime we have a negative divided by another negative, we get a positive. Now, this seems like it kind of stinks a little bit. It's kind of like, oh man, I got these rules I got to remember for adding and subtracting. Then I got these rules I got to remember for multiplying. And then these rules I got to remember for dividing. But the great thing about the rules for multiplication and division of sign numbers is that they can all be summarized into two very simple rules. And let's look at them in exercise number six. All right, the general pattern for both multiplying and dividing. Exercise number six. Fill in each of the following to make the statement true about multiplication and division of signed numbers. Letter A. If the two numbers involved in a product or quotient have the same sign, so they're both positive or they're both negative, then the result is what? And then letter B. If the two numbers involved in a product or quotient have opposite signs, i.e. one's positive and one's negative, then the result is blank. All right, what I'd like you to do pause the video and fill in those blanks with either the word positive or the word negative. Go ahead and do so now. All right, well it's very, very simple. If the two numbers in the product have the same sign, they're both positive or they're both negative, then the product or quotient, right, the result is going to be positive. Hello, there it is. On the other hand, if the two numbers are, have opposite signs, then when we either find their product or their quotient, the result will be negative. All right. And it's kind of awesome. It means you don't really, when you're finding products and quotients of negatives and positives, you don't really have to worry so much about all these sub K, oh, the, the top's negative, the bottom's positive, et cetera, et cetera. No. When we have a product, which is a multiplication problem, or a quotient, which is a division problem, and the two pieces have the same sign, they're both positive, they're both negative, the result's positive. And, on the other hand, if the two numbers have opposite signs, then the result is negative. And man, I can't tell you, I cannot tell you how long you'll have to deal with those facts in math, because that's entirely dependent on how far you go in math. Negative numbers are gonna hang out in math as far as you go. And these rules for multiplying and dividing them are going to be absolutely essential to know. So let's get some practice in one final exercise. All right, so exercise number seven. Find the result of each of the following quotients or products. Each will be an integer. All right, this is awesome. And in fact, I think I want to turn you loose on these. All the answers are nice whole numbers. They're all nice whole numbers. I shouldn't say they're all nice whole numbers. None of the answers involve fractions, okay? They're all integers. That that's what that means, all right? But some of them are going to be positive. Some of them are going to be negative, And I'd like you to take a shot to figure out what they are. All right, let's go through them. Here we go. Letter A. We've got negative 21 divided by positive 7. Because we have a negative and a positive mixed together using division, the answer has to be negative. And specifically, it's going to be just the negative version of 21 divided by 7. So since 21 divided by 7 is equal to 3, our answer here is going to be a negative 3. All right, letter B. I've got a negative 8 times a negative 10. Because both parts of the product are negative, it means that the result of the product is going to be positive. 8 times 10 is 80. So that is our answer. 
Letter C, I've got negative 48 divided by negative six, very similar to letter B in that both parts of that quotient are negative, therefore the result is gonna be positive. 48 divided by six is eight, so negative 48 divided by negative six is also eight. All right, same thing, right? Letter D, I've got positive 12 times negative six. Since there's a mixture, one's positive, one's negative, the result is negative. Specifically, 12 times six is 72. So in this case, our answer is negative 72. Letter E, I've got positive 30 divided by negative six. Again, because I've got a positive and a negative mixed together using division, the result is negative. 30 divided by six is five. Here the answer will be negative five. Letter F, I've got negative seven times positive seven. All right, if it was negative seven plus positive seven, we all know what the answer there would be, it'd be zero. But negative seven times positive seven is gonna be negative 49. All right, let's go up a little bit. Now, these two, of course, look like fractions because they are fractions. And yet, fractions are division. And we're gonna look at that a little bit in the next lesson as well. But here, I really wanna think about this as negative 36 divided by negative three. If I have a negative divided by a negative, the answer is a positive, and 36 divided by three is 12. All right, same deal here, except I have a negative divided by a positive, so the answer must be negative. 24 divided by six is four, so the answer is negative four. And finally, I've got negative eight times negative five, right? I've got a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. Eight times five is 40, and so that's my answer. Let me bring all of these back on the sheet so that you can kind of check your own work. Fairly simple, right? Let's summarize it with the end of the lesson. All right, it's really basically pretty simple. When you divide two numbers that have the same sign, your result is positive. When you divide two numbers that have opposite signs, one positive, one negative, then the result is negative. That follows exactly the same pattern as multiplication, blah, blah, blah. but that's a good thing because then that allows us to kind of just store up in our head one fundamental fact about multiplying and dividing. When you've got two numbers and they have the same sign, then whether you multiply or divide them, you're gonna get a positive answer. When you have two numbers that have opposite signs, then when you divide or multiply them, you're gonna get a negative answer. We'll see a lot more of that as we move forward, including in the next lesson. For now, I'd like to just thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, Keep thinking and keep solving problems.